Hello and welcome back to the logical reasoning lecture series. I am Abhishek and today we are going to discuss a new tabular arrangement problem and a different very basic and almost mechanical way of solving it. It's a very simple technique and I'll be surprised if you find it tough to understand. So let's move to the problem now and see how it works. The question here mentions seven friends who like seven different subjects and have been ranked one to seven in their exams. It is followed by a set of seven statements using which we have to work out the solution. The solution ideally has to be in the form of a table that matches the seven persons with their respective ranks and favorite subjects. I'll advise you to pause the video here, read the questions carefully and try to solve it on your own without looking at the solution. You may also access this question in a downloadable format on our website. Let's proceed with solving the problem now. We first need to create a table with 7 rows and 9 columns. The first column contains the ranks of the 7 persons. The second contains the names and the rest 7 columns, the 7 subjects. So in each row, which corresponds to a particular rank name combination, we will put a check against the correct subject, the one which the person likes and will cross the rest of the cells. Let's start. We will use statement 2 first up, which tells us that Tom gets the worst rank among the 7. So we put Tom's name against rank 7. Simple. Now look at the two highlighted cells in the Tom's row. They belong to geography and history respectively. But since Tom likes neither geography nor history, we put a cross in both these cells. We leave the rest of the subject cells intact for the moment and move forward. Now let's use statements 4 and 7. We can see that Rustam has got rank 2. The row corresponding to rank 2 has been highlighted. So let's put Rustam's name in it and a cross in each of the three cells corresponding to chemistry, math and geography since he likes none of these three subjects as per the two statements. Moving forward, let's look at statement 6 now which states that the person who likes math gets the best rank. Look at the highlighted row. It belongs to rank 1. We need to put a check against math and a cross against each of the rest 6 subjects in this row. Now concentrate on the highlighted column. It belongs to math. Since a subject can be liked by just one student and math is liked by the student who got rank 1, we can infer that it cannot be liked by any other student and so the cells corresponding to math should be crossed against all the other ranks. Statement 5 tells us that Paul hasn't got the best rank, that's rank 1. So let's put Paul's name beside rank 1 momentarily and put a cross over it. Now let's look at statement 3 which compares Sam, Kasim, Winston and Paul. It tells us that Paul comes above Sam and Sam comes above both Kasim and Winston. Looking at the table, we realize that the only positions where these four persons can be fitted into it are the highlighted cells. We fill it up accordingly, keeping the relative positions of Kasim and Winston open since we still haven't figured out who among the two got a better rank. Now look at the highlighted cell. Since there is just one name left to be filled in the first column, which is Brian, he should be rank 1 and so we put his name here. Now look at statement 5 once again, which says that Paul likes biology. We can put a check against biology and a cross against the rest of the subjects in Paul's row. Similarly, using statement 3, which says that Sam likes physics, we can put a check against physics and a cross against the rest of the subjects in Sam's row. Now look at the two highlighted columns, one corresponding to physics and the other to biology. Since a check is already there in both these columns, note the encircled cells, we can safely cross the rest of the cells. You need to realize here that there can be only one check in each column as a subject can be liked by just one of the given seven students. Likewise. There can be just one check in each row since a student cannot like more than one subject as per the question. 
Let's move forward. Statement 1 tells us that Qasem stands below Winston. If we look at the highlighted cells, we can infer that Winston would be rank 5 and Qasem rank 6. So we can arrange it accordingly. Also, since Qasem likes sociology, we put a check against sociology and a cross against the rest of the subjects in the highlighted row. Now look at the highlighted column, the one corresponding to sociology. Since a check is already there in this column, the one we had just put against Qasim's name, we can safely cross the rest of the cells of the column. What it means is that sociology is liked by Qasim and nobody else among the seven friends. Let's now look at the two highlighted rows of Rustam and Tom and one highlighted column of geography. We realize that in each of these, there is just one vacant cell, the one with a circle and the rest of the cells have all been crossed. It naturally means that there should be a check in all these vacant cells since each row or column should have exactly one check. So we mark this up accordingly and move forward. Now the last step. Look at the two highlighted columns, one of chemistry and the other of history. A check is already there in both of these columns, the encircled ones. Since we can put only one check in a column, we proceed to cross the rest of the vacant cells in the two columns. And with this, we have completed our table. The problem we just solved only required us to identify the correct order of statements and the process becomes quite instinctive after that. I find it worth mentioning that it's not the only way this problem can be solved and we could instead have used a 7 row 3 column table as well. So it is up to you to zero in on the optimal method based on what you are more comfortable with and what the specific problem is more suited to. However, it's always a good idea to know multiple ways to approach a question. You will gradually develop the knack of identifying what works best for you in a particular situation. I'll see you next time with a new problem and a different approach to tabulating data. Goodbye and take care.